I'm going to spend a bit of time showing you how to get the best out of a heart and heart dissection. I've got a heart here that we got from our local abattoir and we've managed to develop quite a good relationship with them there so that they know now that they uh, need to try not to slash the hearts about too much so that we can use them properly when we're doing dissections and things. And uh, this heart's a really nice one, it's only got a tiny little gash in there. Uh, I know it can be a problem getting hold of good quality material uh, and there really isn't any other solution than, than making friends with the people at your abattoir or your butchers and, uh, and getting to know them over time. Um, if you're interested in health and safety issues um, and ethical things to do with using hearts and other dissection material, the people you should go to for advice are Cleeps and they'll tell you everything you need to know about handling this kind of stuff safely and sensitively. If you're in Scotland, you can go to Cirque for the same sort of thing. You'll notice I'm not wearing gloves, and it really isn't necessary to wear gloves when you're doing dissection work. I prefer not to. Um, but you must remember, even if you have been wearing gloves, uh, to give your hands a really good wash um, when you've finished everything. Um, so, before you do any cutting up, there are some things you ought to look at on the outside of a heart. Um, if you're lucky enough to get lots and lots of blood vessels still attached to the heart, um, for example, if you've got a whole pluck and you've been able to cut the heart off yourself, then one thing you can do is cut off some rings of artery and vein. The arteries are relatively thick-walled, they're relatively pale in colour, and they're really stretchy and springy. And uh, you can do little Hooke's Law experiments with that and compare it to vein, which is much less elastic. That's a nice little thing to do with those bits, so they're not waste. Um, so one of the other things you ought to be thinking about doing is showing how the heart's connected to the rest of the circulatory system. So a glass rod is a really useful tool for dissection work. Uh, and I'm going to poke glass, the glass rod down the various tubes and see where they go. Uh, as a guide to the anatomy, essentially if you look at the sort of top end on at the heart, then the vessel right in the middle, that's an artery, is the aorta. And that's going to, uh, if you were to put a glass rod down that, it would take you into the left ventricle of the heart. So that's one clue on the anatomy. Another clue is to look at the series of blood vessels and fat around the outside of the heart. You'll see that there's one in particular that runs in a diagonal pattern across the heart. That's going to separate the left and the right halves. And the other thing is by feeling it, palpating, because the right side of the heart, which is pumping around the low resistance circuit to the lungs, is much flabbier and thinner than the left side, which is pumping around the high resistance circuit of the rest of your body. So all those clues help you to orientate the heart. In textbooks, they draw two atria, two ventricles, side by side, but in reality they're wrapped around each other. So you should be looking for that curvature as well. So if I go down the aorta here in the middle, I'm going to find myself here on the left-hand side. And if I go down the other artery, which is this one here, the pulmonary artery, I'm going to find myself in the much thinner right-hand side. Right, so what we're going to do now is pour some water in uh, to uh, see how these chambers and vessels are connected with each other. And Jill's going to come and help me do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is pour some water into the uh, right atrium. So right atrium here has got two entrances. I'm going to block one of them off. I'm going to connect my tube into the other entrance. Okay, and Jill's going to slowly pour some water down that tube and we should be looking for it to exit by the pulmonary artery. There we go, bubbling out quite nicely. When I'm convinced that that's really full, that's great, thanks Jill. I'm going to put it in the measuring cylinder and then I'm going to try and tip that water out and massage it out. If you want to lift that right up, Jill. So that's lovely. So we've got pretty much bang on 10 cm cubed of liquid in that side. We're going to do the same on the other side. You see most of the uh, left atrium has been cut off there actually, which will change things a little bit. But in goes our tube. This time we should be looking for it bubbling out of the aorta. 
see it coming out there at the top of the aorta. We're nicely full. And we'll measure it again. Massage it out. We'll get all of that out if we can. If you lift that one up, Jill. And yippee, bang on the same. So that's what you would expect, of course, because um, if the two sides of the heart are pumping at the same time, um, in order to maintain a constant circulation and not allow either the lungs or the body part of the circulation to overfill, they need to be pumping the same volume per stroke as well. So one thing you can do in your dissections is you don't have to do the sort of anatomical dissection I'm going to do in a minute. You could do a different sort of dissection. Here's another one I looked at earlier, where I've taken this heart, and you see that's one that was really badly slashed there by the, uh, by the vet. I've literally cut it in half, so you can see the two chambers. There's the uh, right ventricle of the heart, with a much thinner wall around it, and the left ventricle of the heart with a much thicker wall around it. So that's a nice one to show. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some of the anatomical dissection and I'll return to you in a minute and show you some of the things you should see inside. Right, I've, I've dissected this heart now and I've made four key cuts. So what I'm going to do is show you those key incisions that I've made, then what you can see inside the heart through each of those uh, and tell you a little bit of some of the things you ought to be doing uh, for the learners and with the learners about what you see. So I've started on the right hand side of the heart and there's a good reason for that which I'll come to later. The first incision I made is simply down through the right atrium and into the right ventricle and then open that up. And that's what you can see here. So here's the top of the, uh, the heart, the, the atrium. Uh, if you just notice in here, that's going to take us into the other entrance to the right atrium, the other branch of the vena cava. And coming down here, into the ventricle itself. You see the little valve flaps here, follow those, those right round and show these really strong cords that tie those, guy, those valve flaps down like the guy ropes on a tent. And then the second incision I made, also on that side, was starting in the pulmonary artery, which I've cut right down and butterflied open to get into. Uh, the ventricle again, so the blood will be pumped up this way into the pulmonary artery and here at the boundary between the ventricle and the artery are the uh, half moon shaped semilunar valve flaps, three of them, that one's been cut by me there, there we are, two and the other end of that one and you ought to be asking the students to model how that valve works. I've done exactly the equivalent incisions on the left hand side. So I started in the left atrium, butterfly that open to the left ventricle. Much thicker wall which you'd be pointing out. The valve flaps again here, going right round and the strong cords tying those down. And then up here you're going to be going out into the aorta. Blood's flowing that way so I've cut the aorta open. And there's our butterfly and open aorta and the equivalent semilunar valves to the ones in the pulmonary artery there. But this is something now that I really think it's important that we show uh, learners when they're learning about the heart. I think really it's a tragedy if we don't show youngsters these things. They're only on the left hand side of the heart, they're at the very base of the aorta and there are two holes here and here. And those are the openings to the coronary arteries, the arteries that are going to take blood into the heart muscle itself. They're supplying the heart muscle with oxygen in the blood and nutrients and glucose, and that blood is going to take away the carbon dioxide. Um, you'll be talking about poor diet, smoking, and the other risk factors that are associated with coronary heart disease, which is about blocking these arteries. And I think all youngsters need a chance to find out what those arteries really are. So now I'm at the end of my heart dissection and I've got everything opened up, the last thing I'm going to do is inject the coronary arteries with some green dye so we can see where they go. So here I have a plastic pasteur pipette filled with uh, green food dye 
and I'm going to insert that into the coronary artery here, just gently. See how deeply I can go with it. Now, as I squeeze, hopefully you might see the green colour filling this artery up and you might see it squirting out at the cut end. Well, I hope that's helped you to get the best out of a heart with your learners. Thank you for watching.